Okay, super. Well, welcome to this Write the Right Words webinar. This is a direct knockoff from Ellen's highly popular Let's Communicate articles that she does every month. We just added an S because this time we're covering a lot of different topics. So I will be the first to admit she is the expert in the grammar and punctuation and stuff like that. Ellen, or excuse me, Kelly and I go to her when we need something. Comes in handy to have both an English major and a journalism major. I will admit my mother was my English teacher in high school, so I kind of grew up with it too, but still. So I'm Becky Koch, the Ag Communication Director, and Ellen is an Information Specialist here in Ag Communication. And we would like to share some things with you today on writing the right words. So first of all, I would appreciate it if all of you would type into your chat pod just some examples of some of the different things you write. Every day, all of us spend a lot of time writing. So what are some types of things you write? Hang on a sec. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, looks like the responses are articles for newspapers, emails, um, news little columns, letters, impact statements, instructions for content, contests, flyers, posters. If you're wondering why Ellen's repeating those, it's because I can't see the chat pod when I'm presenting. So lots of variety you see. Some things we thought about, you already listed there. Newsletter articles, news releases, advertising. Not very often do we have to do that, but occasionally. Glad a couple of you said impact reports. Letters, yes, some of us still do those occasionally. Emails, sometimes we don't think of those as you know official correspondence, but they certainly are. So you had a wonderful list. But obviously, a lot of us spend a lot of time writing. So what we encourage you to do before you sit down and put your fingers on the keyboard is to think. Really think about what you want to write. And this is going to sound like a repeat from those of you who have been to communications camp and other things. But what is your goal? What do you want people to do as a result of your writing? Not just what do you want them to know, but what do you want them to do? What do you want them to possibly change their behavior? So what is your goal for writing? Do you want them to eat more nutritiously after they see this Facebook post? Do you want to have them shovel their snow without killing themselves after they see this infographic? Do you want them to come to your meeting after they see this news release? What do you want them to do before you even sit down at the keyboard? And second of all, who is your target audience? Who is that they? It's easy for us to say, well, the general public, I want all North Dakotans to be aware. But remember, we're not trying to build awareness. We're trying to change behavior. So who is our target audience? A lot of times here in ag communication, we get farmers and ranchers. Well, an organic producer who grows specialty lettuce in a hothouse or a high tunnel is a heck of a lot different than a Western North Dakota wheat producer. So think about who your target audience is. So think about your goal and target audience before you even sit down to start writing. And then think about your key messages. What are one or two brief statements that you want people to do without the information overload? This is truly your key message. For example, when we use my plate, a good key message is make half of your plate fruits and vegetables. That's an easy something that people could do. The target audience may be narrowed down on talking to high school kids. How can I reach them to encourage them to make half of their plate fruits and vegetables? So before you even sit down to start writing your news release, your Facebook post, your whatever, think about your goal, your target audience, and your key messages. Also, we need to think about Readers start at the top of a story, usually. And editors, if 
somebody else is going to be determining this, like if it's a news release or whatever, they start chopping off at the bottom. So get to the point. So often we want to tell the whole story and then get to the conclusion. But we need to just flip that upside down. That's why we call it the inverted pyramid, so that we get to the point with the conclusion or the most important information first. Even today, before I send anything out, it's so easy to forget something so basic, like what time was this or what was the location? So every time I write something, I still go through the five W's and H just to make sure I have my who, what, when, where, why, and how. So that's another thing you can think through before you sit down to start writing. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to introduce Ellen here and she's going to take you through some exercises. So take it away, Ellen. Okay, so please um, either write your response in the chat box or say verbally what you think the right answer is for these. So which of these do you think is correct? Just say left or right. Don't yeah. try to explain the one with yeah. or without. Just left or right. Which one is a better option? Are you getting some responses, Ellen, since I can't see? Uh, they're typing, it says. Yay! So far, we've got two laps. Don't be shy. You can talk, too. Don't feel like you have to type. That's what I said, right? It. We've got one right. Go ahead and explain. Okay. We don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to take too long. Well, because um, we've got a lot of these. Right. Okay, it's on the left because you need to separate the quote with a comma from who is doing the speaking. That would be true any time when there's quotation marks before the said or explained or anything, right, right Ellen? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What if and I use the comma always goes inside the quote, the quote then? Yes, it does. Periods okay. and commas always go inside the quote. Other punctuation often goes outside, but it's based on the context. Okay, thank you. We didn't point that out, but yes, please, if you have a question as we go, feel free. Okay, which of these do you think is correct? We have one right, two rights, one left. Uh, we have one right, okay. Um, another right, okay, yes, correct. It is, it is on the right because words um, such as toward or forward or inward or backward are always without the S. That's one of those that we probably say it the other way around, but right. in writing we yeah. try to follow. And, and we should point out that most of these are general English. However, here in Ag Communication, you'll, we'll come across a few examples where we follow what we call associated press style. So all of the publications we edit and news releases we send and materials we work on, we follow consistently in associated press style. Okay, left or right? I feel like I'm in the uh, eye doctor's office. <laughs> we have a right. A few more rights. Yes, right is correct because uh, directions such as north, south, east, west are always lowercase. That's kind of generally accepted practice, but it's also AP style. Okay, what about this one? We've got one left, two lefts, three, four, okay. 
Um, yes, it is the left because, no, I'm, excuse me. <laughs> yes, it is the left. I'm getting confused. It is the left because if you say first annual, it might not be an annual event. The, the, the event might bomb, and you're not going to have another one next year, so you can't say that it's going to be the first annual. So it's always just first. What about this one? Looks like we've got some lefts, several lefts. Um, yes, that is correct. Left is correct because you need the apostrophe between the H and the ERS because the apostrophe replaces the ME. MB of members. It's similar to it is changed to its. You're leaving something mm -hmm. out. That's how we try to get that across to people. So and, what and otherwise it looks like for right. hers. It always also looks like for hers if you don't have the apostrophe in there. Good point. I hadn't thought of that. Okay, what about this one? Got a couple of rights. Got another right. Another right. Got a left. Okay, it is right because when you have to use an and be before words that sound like they start with a vowel, so even though you see N in front of NDSU, you say N when you speak it, so it sounds like an E. Um, that's why when you say historic event, you have to use A instead of an because you, the H is, is a consonant sound. That one clear as mud to everybody, or do we need to talk through it more? Make sense? So if it's a vowel sound, then you start with an N. Okay, what about this one? Got a couple of rights. Another right. I think that one that says it's not a sentence. <laughs> Actually, it's the one on the right, and it is a complete sentence. Um, your giving um, directions or um, a message to someone and you have to separate, it's kind of like with a quote, you have to separate the message from from um, who it's going to. And is it just me or do I see that wrong so often, especially in advertising in places? It'll say, happy birthday so-and-so with no comma or hello so-and-so or, or whatever, even in emails and letters. So many people are forgetting that. That's what I was just going to say in emails. I'm trying and practicing on working on putting that comma in there, you know, because I'm trying to teach myself, okay, this is where you pause. So I'm, I'm working on this right. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you separate the message from who it's going to. That's a good way to remember it. Thank you, Ellen. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this one? You've got a left, got a right, a couple more rights, another left, another right. Okay, the correct answer is right because extension is a proper name, and even though it's just an abbreviation of extension service, still it's a proper name, it's a proper noun, and we capitalize those. I know that there's a lot of publications like newspapers that lowercase extension but our thinking, this is kind of one of our internal rules, but we think that because it's a proper name, we capitalize it. And otherwise, extension, you could mean any kind of extension, extending whatever. It's not a proper, proper name. We think it is. And Ellen said, true, some newspapers do lowercase it, and even some other states 
but I agree with her reasoning that it is an abbreviation of a proper name. Mm -hmm. But agent is not capitalized? Agent is a job title, not a, not a, um, or like a job description is not a title like president. Thank you. Any other thoughts or questions on this one? What about this one? We got a right, we got a left, got a left, another right, and a left. Okay, actually, <laughs> yes, left is correct. This is a little harder one to explain. Um, but if you would just took out the A3 tool, if you said a five-year management plan, you would hyphenate that because five and year are what's considered a compound modifier. Both words together modify management program. And so with the three, you need the, the hyphen after the three, be, and then you, it's kind of shorthand, you leave out the word year. You could say a three hyphen year to a five-year management plan, but you would need the hyphens because it is still considered part of this two-word phrase that modifies management program. That's clear as mud to everybody. Sorry, I forgot. Which one did you say is right? The correct left. or correct? Left. left is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You need the hyphens because, like I said, it's the five and year or three year are kind of a two-word thought that goes together, so yeah. it, both of them modify management program. Makes good sense. Okay. Don't you all feel like you're back in senior high English? But these are good reminders for us. Yeah. I think okay. it's fun even if I get them all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a hint. Just remember what we were just talking about the last uh, question. And I'll help you decide what's the right answer on this one. Got a couple of lefts. We got a right, got another left, another left, and a right. Okay, left is correct because, as I said before, you, it's um, land and grant are a compound thought that's modifying university, so they need to ha have the hyphen because there's one thought. Two words may become one thought. You wouldn't say a land university or a grant university. You have right. to say a land grant university. Right. right. Okay, what about this one? I think people are thinking on this one. You got an either, a right, a couple of lefts, a left. Okay, the answer is left, although either one is okay. But um, we're this is where we kind of defer to AP style, and they use suggest the word to mainly because. If you misplay or the hyphen gets dropped out, then there could be a problem. So the word two is very clear. Um, but just be very consistent. If you use one or the others, be consistent throughout. And they also don't forget that, that AM and PM need periods after the A and the M and the P and the M. I know a lot of people don't put those in, and sometimes they capitalize the AM and the PM. Um, AP style says lowercase, and that's pretty much standard practice, I think. To me, it's just more clearly understood. If I see AM without the periods, I think, okay, AM. So yeah, it helps yeah. clarify it. That's true. On the too. one on the right, following up on what Ellen said, just for consistency, if you change the hyphen to the word to, then it would say from and to. So they're kind of equivalent. Yeah. But 
Or you could just say the office is open 8 a.m. hyphen 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. But with the from in there, right? Yeah, it's just not consistent. Are there any questions on that one? And if you haven't figured out here in Ag Communication, if there is a way to leave out a word, if it's unnecessary, we will. So that's why it could be simply the office is open 8 a.m. hyphen 5 p.m., but we do prefer the two. But there's no need for the from. Right. I have a quick question. So, you know, when making posters or flyers, you know, we sometimes schedule out. So let's say at 8 o'clock is registration. So can we just leave it at the number 8 and then a.m., or do we need the 8 colon double zero? No, yeah. you don't. You don't need the the colon and the two zeros. Um, we will always shorten it because that's redundant, basically. Okay, that's what yeah. I was curious. But make sure if it's something that's eight, let's say, make sure it's a.m. or p.m. specify because you know right. something could start at p.m. eight at p.m. Right. Okay. Thank you. Good question. We didn't think about that one, but again, if AgCom can leave yep. something out and make it still clear, we will. So yep. the colon and the zeros aren't necessary. Yep, yep. Okay, what about this one? This is this is one that throws people a lot. We've noticed that. Including Bruce and Scott. Although I think we got it through their heads now. Looks like we got a couple of lefts. Another left. All right. Looks like a couple more people are typing. Um, a left and a right. Okay, another right. Actually, yes, it is um, right because quality doesn't necessarily have to be good. It could be poor quality. So you have to specify whether it's good quality, high quality, poor quality. Okay, this one is another one that throws people a lot because it's spelled somewhat the same and sounds the same kind of when you're saying it. Got a couple of lefts. Another left. Okay, got a couple of responses saying left, unless she is starting to speak immediately. Very good. That's absolutely correct because imminent with I M M I N E T N T means something's going to happen very soon. Eminent means top, well known speaker. I will admit, I goof this one up every time. Did everybody catch what Ellen said, the difference? We good? It's a tough one. Okay, what about this one? Got a left and a right. Right. Another right, another right, a left, another right. It looks like we got another message coming in. And another left. Okay, those of you who said left are correct because he considered NDSU is a complete sentence and he, however, he chose Minnesota instead as another complete sentence. So you need to separate complete sentences either with a period or a semicolon. And however, always has a comma following it when you use it in this kind of situation. Does that so, make Ellen, sense? if it was me, I would probably just put he considered NDSU period right. capital, however, and that would be accurate also, right? That's what I, that's what I said is 
because there's complete sentences, either you have to use a period or a semicolon. A comma won't won't do it. I just despise semicolons for some reason, so that's how I would do it personally. Yeah, it can be either way. Like I said, if if it's kind of like you all kind of want to keep the whole thought together, that's why you put the semicolon in instead of a period. But that's a matter of choice. So the test is if the two parts stand alone as two sentences, correct? What's that? So the test is the two parts stand alone as complete sentences each. Right. If, if they're two complete sentences, then you either put a period between them or a semicolon. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Here's another one that throws people a lot. Okay, we got to write. Got to write. We got to left. We got to write. Another right. A couple more rights. Yes, those of you who said right are correct because you would. If you take out the Joe and the Sarah, you would not say, contact myself for information. You would say, contact me for more information. Um, about the only time you would actually use myself in a sentence is, um, I want to see for myself or something like that. But in this situation, it always would be me. I like that test. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. What about this one? Okay, we've got some rights. A couple more rights, another left. And a right. Those of you who said right are right. Um, because if you were talking your child, singular, child is singular, so you would have to say he or she, unless you happen to know whether the child is a boy or a girl. Better yet, as you notice what just popped up, make them all plural and just say talk to your children so they know you are concerned. That's a lot simpler, fewer words, and it's easy to understand. That is the easy way to do it, you guys. Just yep. write it in plural yep. to begin with. Okay. This is a little trickier one. We got some rights, a left. A left, another left, another right, a left, a left. Okay, so those who said left are correct because you only use who with people and named animals. Cows are that. Generic cows, anyway. If I yes. name my cow, if I said, that's, yeah, that's what I said. Daisy, a name. who was pregnant. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what I said. That's named. You know, if it's named animal, like you know, like you said, Daisy the cow was pregnant. Yep. Then it's then it's a who. And that's AP style. We're following there. Here's one we see a lot, the wrong way. <laughs> we got some rights, more rights. Yes, absolutely, the one on the right, because if you say in the state of North Dakota, 
that's being redundant. You don't need in the state of because everybody should know that North Dakota is already knows it's a state, so you don't really need it. And again, like Becky said, we're going to be taking out words that aren't necessary. Write as concisely as possible. Mm -hmm. So just think about what we just said about conciseness before you answer this one. Several laps. Absolutely. Again, this is in is located on is redundant. If it's on the shelf, it is located on the shelf. So you don't need the is located on. This one, I'm sorry, but it really makes my teeth hurt when I see this. <laughs> Incorrect. A couple of rights, more rights. Right. Another right, a few more. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Everybody, I think, got this one. Um, if lending means you are giving something to someone, borrowing means you are taking from someone. So I will borrow the book. I will take the book. Please lend me your book. I will give you my book is a good way to remember it. Okay, we got a right, we got a left, we got a right, more rights, some more rights. Okay, those of you who said right are right. Um, 4-H is always, the 4 is always a number, even at the beginning of a sentence. That's part, of, that's, that's part of their name, for one thing. And, and if you were writing out just for cattle or something like that, then it would be written out. But right. like Ellen said, it's part of the official name. Mm -hmm. Any other time you would write out the word, even Four. if it was 99 at the beginning of a sentence, where typically we use a numeral for 10 and above. Mm -hmm. But in this case, when it is 4-H, like Ellen said, it is. But in, in any other case, a numeral would be written out at the beginning of a sentence. Do you guys notice often if when newspapers, like, I know mine, sometimes they'll leave out the hyphen in 4-H. Is that a, a big no-no? Well, again, that's it's part of the 4-H actual name is the part of the, I mean, the hyphen is part of the name. So, yes, it needs to be in there. So, it's, I mean, you know, you might want to point out to them politely that that's really part of their name. But, okay. you know, it's not a big thing to argue over. Okay, thank you. Right, Becky? Correct, yeah. I like to point out politely that the official name does include the hyphen. Okay, what about this one? This is another trickier one. Looks like we're getting some rights. Some more rights. Okay, it looks like everybody says right, and that's correct. Um, the reason you use the comma after act, because what follows it is um, a phrase that if you left it out, it would make sense without it in there. And so it's called a non-essential clause. Basically, that's just grammar. But So if, um, if it was something that was really part of the sentence is really important that you couldn't get along without it, then you would not use the comma. One of the hints there is the word which. Right. Almost always, if it's which, you mm -hmm. need those commas. In fact, I was at a professional development meeting, and a teacher had a big witch's hat, and she had earrings that had gigantic commas on each ear. So she reminded her students that comma, and then the witch, and then the comma at the end of it. I just thought that was such a wonderful illustration. And as you said, Becky, with the witch, um, 
that usually indicates a, a phrase that you can get along without. If you have the word that in there, that's a sentence. That phrase you cannot get along without, and so that makes a difference, too. Obviously, it makes sense just saying the Smith-Lieber Act was passed right. in 1914. Right. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's another one that we see wrong a lot of the time. I got some lefts here, another right, and then a left. A couple more lefts. Left is correct because you don't need the apostrophe in the date, because apostrophes usually indicate something's missing, and nothing is missing in this one, in a date. It's just simply plural, right? It would right, be like yeah. adding right. an S to make anything right. else plural. Now, if you were saying the 80s, then you would have put the apostrophe before the 80s because you were leaving out the 1-9 or the whatever date, you 1880s or whatever. But, yeah, so it's just simply plural. Okay. Thank you, Ellen. We wanted to just open it up now and see if you had any other punctuation or grammar or any other related things to this that you had questions or concerns about. So we're wide open at this point, and I'll let Ellen answer them. <laughs> Gee, thanks. You can either speak up or type in if you have a question, something you've seen, something you weren't sure about. While you're thinking about that, if at any time you're not sure of word usage or whatever, give one of us a call here in AgCom or instant messages or email us or whatever. But we're glad to help you. We can, okay. if we don't know, we can use one of our own resources to look it up. Okay, it's got a question on an easy tip to remember how to use effect and affect. Well, Ooh. basically, <laughs> affect is a verb. It means to influence. So let's say the game will affect the standings. Um, do not use affect as a noun. Effect as a verb means to cause something. Like, he will affect many changes in the company. Um, effect as a noun means result, so the effect was overwhelming or he miscalculated the effect of his actions, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? You know how so, I remember this, I hate to admit? The word verb has an E in it, but yet the effect is not the verb. The one that starts with an E is not the verb, even though the word verb has an E in it. I know that may sound silly to some of you, but that's how I remember it. Any other questions? Sorry. I can't mute. Did we just lose? No, I'm still here. It'll go to voicemail. I thought I turned it down, but it apparently didn't work. Any other questions at this point, or should we move on? Is there anything else in the chat, Ellen? Nope. I just lost my voice again here, <laughs> briefly. Oh, we can hear you. Yeah, oh, I, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, it just went blank. I couldn't hear you either, so. Well, my phone was ringing was why. Oh. <laughs> it's ringing again. Ringing. I apologize. Yes. Um, no, there's no other, no other questions. Okay, so just to wrap things up here, we encourage you to think about writing, and not just for the web, because most of these we think about for the web, but yet for all of your writing, put the most important information first. Write short sentences. Too often we drag it out and have to take a breath in between, and, and we just write way too long of sentences often. Write short paragraphs, too visually and to make it easier to read. If I come to a story in a magazine or a newspaper or online or anything and it's just a big gray blob, I'm immediately turned off. 
where if it's broken up with short paragraphs, maybe even bullets, subheads, things like that, it's just a lot easier to read and more inviting to read. So break up your information. Use the words your audience uses. Here at universities, we are notorious for speaking in words that our audience may not necessarily use. The example we always use is horticulture. If I talk to my next door neighbor, he would say his garden or his flowers or his trees. He probably wouldn't even use the word horticulture in the discussion. So think about the words our audience uses as you're writing. I already mentioned the subheads and bulleted lists. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I do that a lot in emails even. Here are the questions I need answered and I'll put them in bullets to make it visually better and easier to follow. Because we do all scan rather than just starting at the top and reading through like we might a novel in the kind of writing that we often do too often we scan our publications or our journals or even letters and some things, I hate to admit. So think about people scanning your reading. And use images if you possibly can. However, and this is a whole nother webinar, legal images. That doesn't mean grabbing something off the web, even if it is for, quote, educational purposes. We must follow copyright laws. but. I'm not going to get into that now, but use relevant images. Maybe you shot a photo that would add to your email or add to your newsletter or add to your news release or whatever. That's fantastic. So that just adds to your writing. And again, think of it from your reader's point of view. Kelly and Ellen and I were just at a presentation at noon and the bank talked about their marketing and they look at it from their customer's point of view. They don't rah, 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 look what we've done. It's how can we help you? And I think that's what we do from you, or excuse me, from NDSU also, is how we're serving the people of North Dakota or the world. And always include your contact information. We've been trying to get information about a printer and the salesperson didn't include his phone number in the email. Perfect example, whether it's a news release, an email, uh, whatever, include some contact information, no matter what you're writing, if it's going to somebody else. Proofreading. First of all, after you write this, whatever it is you're writing, take a break and then start fresh. We do that here in our department all the time. If you've been staring at your computer, you just need to get away and then come back and proofread. Don't rush. Too often we zip, 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 yeah, 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 I got this right, I got this right, and then I'll hit send and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't see that. So take your time and really proofread correctly. We read out loud quite a bit, or at least I do. It helps me to hear if the flow is correct and if something really obvious is not appropriate. So for proofreading, I know I read out loud, I can't speak for Ellen, but reading out loud really helps me catch things, especially the too long of sentences and too long of paragraphs. Oh, I second that because I do this all the time. If it sounds complicated and you can't understand what you were saying, you're, you lose your thought halfway through the sentence, then, it's, then you need to fix it. Have somebody else read it, if at all possible. Now, we probably don't want to do that with every single email, but for example, with news releases, Kelly and Ellen switch back and forth all the time. Our general rule is a news release does not go out unless a second person has read it for proofreading. Because once we send out a news release to our 800 or whatever on our news release list, a retraction is very, very, very difficult. So we want to make sure it goes out right the first time. So have somebody else read it if it's at all possible. Don't depend solely on spell check. Yes, it can catch a few things, and yes, I use it, but that doesn't replace, obviously, as you all know, because it only is truly checking spelling. And a lot of words can be used interchangeably. 
it's especially important to check your URLs, check numbers, check dates, spelling of names. Details like that are some of the easiest things to slip up on when you're proofreading. So do a double check on those. And what we've already said, just delete anything that's not necessary, extra words, extra phrases, anything that's redundant. It's like, well, we need to tell them three times. That's in a speech, maybe. But when you're writing, you don't need to tell them three times. Say it easily, clearly, correctly the first time, and you've done it. Because chances are they won't keep reading if they go, well, this is duplication. So here I next Go ahead. Becky, excuse me. I just got a request for a website that for the AP style. Can you type? Can you go to ours and type in our own style guide? And while you do that, I will explain that we have to subscribe to the entire AP style book. We have a subscription to it. I don't remember how much we pay for it, but here in Ag Communication. Like Ellen said, we don't always follow it 100%. We've created some of our own style, but we've also created a website, a web page that has some of the most common AP style things we do use. Can somebody find it and put it in the chat box? Because I can't. It's in AgCom. Go to the AgCom website in the left navigation. Go to News. It's under there. Somebody find the AgCom style guide yet? <laughs> Can somebody search? It's there, I swear it's there. In the meantime, we do use probably the AP style book more than anything that we refer to. I hate to admit I don't think I've had my elements of style book open for ages, but some of you guys might have that that you use. This AgCom style guide is what I'm talking about, and in the future, we need to put the URL in here so we can find it again. Ellen does a super job on write the right word and let's communicate every month, so I hope some of you are regular readers of hers. And if you really want kind of a hands-on practice, Purdue has a wonderful, wide open, it's not just for enrolled Purdue students or anything, their online writing lab. They have different modules on different topics. And so just Google Purdue OWL even, I think will get you there, or Purdue Online Writing Lab. And if you want that challenge, they have some great resources there. Has anybody found our own style guide yet? This is sad. <laughs> yeah, yes, they found it, Becky. There's lots okay. of did somebody put it? Through. Did somebody put it in the chat box? Yes. Okay, super, thanks. This is frustrating when I can't see that. So those are the resources we use. Are there any other questions or thoughts that you might want to have? If some of you are really into this, Ellen and I would be glad to stay on a few more minutes because we do have an exercise after this, but this is the end of our formal presentation. If anybody has any other ideas, thoughts, feedback, questions at this point, Okay, if not, I want to thank everybody for joining today. I'm going to stop the recording.